The first time you heard the name Rod Laver was when? <laughs> I was at the Pacific Southwest. How old were you? I was about, I think either the first or second year of playing. Mm -hmm. I think I'm five years younger. Mm -hmm. So, and I saw uh, Rod playing in the juniors at the Pacific Southwest, which is a big tournament all after the U.S. Nationals, which is now the U.S. Open, all the greatest players in the world would come to L.A. for a huge tournament. Okay, and, and Rocket, I said to them, who's, who's the up and coming players? They said, you have to see Rod Laver. And I was 12 at the time, because I love history. So I, I go over to court, it's that court, court next to the pool. Oh yeah. And I see I, this kid, <laughs> he's 17 or 18, playing, I'm going, oh my God, because he's got this huge big top in, forehand is going in the fence. It's going in. It's going in the net. Then he'd smack one just right and I go, oh, if he gets that right. He's, you know, it's amazing. Billie Jean was 12 years old and she remembers watching you play for the first time. When were you first aware, Rod, of Billie Jean King? Well, there was no, there was no Billie Jean game. It, it, it was just we sort of playing from the baseline. Yeah, Billie Jean's her whole structure, the way she played the game, it was, you know, Aggressive. Everything was aggressive, and and that was that that was the thing that the women didn't do, and that that was one of the reasons why this one made a lot made a lot of wins, not playing her best because you, you flatten when you think Billy Jean with a big serve. She comes in and volleys. What do you mean <laughs> she comes in to volley? When you two fell in love with tennis and you wanted it to become your life. It wasn't a professional sport. What were you thinking? Let's make it pro. Because I came from, you have to remember, I came from baseball, which is only America really at that time. And I came from basketball, NBA. I came from all pro sports. So for me, I grew up thinking if you're a pro, it means you're really good. Yeah. But if you are an amateur, amateur or amateur, that means you're not, it's a hobby. It's, it's nice, it's a vocation, but it's not, it's, you're not the best. So I always used to, with the officials in tennis, when I could speak to them, and I tried to be sweet, sweet about it, say, we really, we really need to have pro tennis. And they used to say, no, we don't need that. I said, we do need it, because young people will think we're good. I'll never forget when I just turned contract pro, this little kid saw me practice. He goes, hey, lady, are you a pro? I said, yes, I am. And that was the first time I could say I was a pro with this little kid, this little guy over there. And I thought, finally, he thinks I'm good because I said I'm a pro. And that's exactly the way we're brought up. Was there anyone telling you, Rod, after you won the Grand Slam, all four majors in 1962, that you should not turn pro, that you were going to make history? Do was anyone trying to talk you down? Oh yeah, well Hopman certainly. Mr. Hopman. Harry Hopman did. Davis and I think uh, all, all the, the official you know, committee down in Australia were all T. Robinson, Cliff Sproul, there was five of them that are selectors. And they were talking at their best to try and get me to not turn professional. So when you got back to Wimbledon <clears> the next year, <throat> did you walk through those gates thinking, I never thought I'd be back here? Oh yeah. I, 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 I had to train myself thinking when I, when I was going to turn pro, I'll, I'll never see the US Open, Wimbledon, French or Australian again. And so I, had, I accepted that. And I said, well, I really, you know, I, I've got a chance to win, I think uh, it was 110,000 over three years. And I had to, had to win that with, by the sweat of my brow. I, but I, I felt like I became a new player when I, when I came back to the open ranks and I found myself playing these guys, I, this is all you've got now? Because <laughs> I improved so much. I'm playing the likes of uh, Hode, which, which I, I played him 13 or 14 times and could not beat him once. And so I'm playing Roosevelt, I'm playing Gonzalez. You know, every, every other night you're playing a final. And so I improved out of sight. And yeah, I, mean, I loved every bit of it. And I didn't have, I didn't have injuries. And so, which you would think you'd have more injuries because of the amount of times you're hitting. And, but we just, that was, that was the way I grew up from 63 to 67. We just need to be together in this sport and make it as big as possible and, and really make it as global as possible and just inspire kids and just, just it's such a great sport. It's, it's a lifetime sport. Well, so that, yeah, that's a, so you, yeah, you're talking about the whole game, but 
what what we may have done that for men's tennis, but what you did for ladies tennis yeah, I, was I, yeah, astronomical. That I appreciate and, that, but I didn't want it that way. Yeah, but that but that was the, that, was that, that got time. kids, and now all of a sudden, you know, you're playing these these matches, and you, and you know, then we got a chance that well, you didn't you weren't playing as many tournaments, and and so we never saw you, and but mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden. You know, Billy Jean's got this new serve and volley routine, and you know, and we, everybody's following. You know, saying, you know, yeah, you you read the articles then. You know, Billy Jean's going to reach the top. She's going to be there. And, but then, yeah, you know, who who comes along? You know, you know, any anyone like you know, uh, Margaret Court or Yvonne Goolagong, any right. of that. You know, they came up because of but, Billie Jean. But Chris and. Uh and Martina, too, are just amazing for our sport. Their rivalry. It sounds like mm -hmm. neither one of you two resents all the money in tennis now because you helped no, that's create what, that it. was the dream. That was the dream. So yeah. when they get their big check, I go, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it because, and then you want to know how we are compared to other sports. We want to keep up. Yeah. Right. We want to keep, uh, no, you can't. That's That was our dream yeah. for the, the but, men and women and everyone to have a, chance to make a living. You want to be able to make a living when you have a passion. And everyone always sees just the top two or three players and what they make. They don't realize if you go down the list, it gets rough. At about 100, it starts to become very difficult. We need a rookie school. And we need it young. We need to figure out this stuff. And you shouldn't be able to play on the tour unless you've gone through school. And you need to what understand do you, what, what do they need to learn. They need to understand history. They need to understand what Rocket's gone through. They need to understand their heritage. Because when you understand your heritage, it helps you for the, to shape the future. Tell me how much you remember. It's 1968 at the Wimbledon Ball. And the, oh, the, singles, yeah. the singles winners always used to start <laughs> the Wimbledon see. Ball with dancing together. You felt like losing the match out there because you knew you'd have to dance that night. You're not kidding. <laughs> you're, you're, oh my God. That, that's the biggest dread of the whole tournament. Our job is to inspire, I think. Billy Jean, it was fun to be with you. I love you, man. It's great to see you. Great to see you. You're yeah. the best, always yeah. and forever. Uh, it's been an honor. <laughs> Thank you.